Captain, this ship is sinking. Hello, hello, hello. That's three hellos from the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Samsonite Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgood. Special shout out to our sponsor, Cards of Evil East. This week, we're jumping Epic Petite Cup this past weekend. How do you guys feel about the undefeated Chocobos deck? Throwback Nationals number one. I think it was awesome. I think it was definitely nobody was prepared for that. Very much more of a control deck, right? It has Solera, it has Snow to tap you down, Shiva's to also, like, I mean, I guess it's kind of an aggro. It does have a lot of good things going for it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't recommend it moving forward. What about the yeah. other decks in the top eight? I didn't love it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't love the decks from there. They have a very interesting metagame. You wouldn't do very well if you brought a Mono Lightning to Tampa, right? I mean, mm -hmm. both uh, Kayla and James showed up to our locals with Mono Lightning. They got mm -hmm. like, punished pretty hard. The stream was interesting. I think RVA did a great breakdown in their <laughs> podcast of how the stream went. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually realize it was the Petite Cup going on. I've missed out. You, you missed out on Mighty Morph and Moogle Rangers, apparently, was one of the other decks in the top eight. Except it doesn't have Zezat. It is important to keep in mind it was a 33-person tournament. Oh, I mean, a quarter of the field gets in. Kind of a nice place to be. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why <laughs> top eight lists are good. But, I mean, I... How about you? They, they should allow deck lists, but it, I'm, I'm just saying that, like, I think it's also on the players. They should have checked going in and put some sort of pressure on... Uh, I don't know if I take an, a loss for it. Um, but <laughs> I definitely was undefeated. He doesn't take L's. Yeah, well, I don't get put on stream when I go undefeated, so it doesn't matter. Any the Kansas Petite Cup. You brought up an interesting idea the other day. Set themes or stories. Thoughts on that? What I wanted is is to kind of set a world in which Opus Nine takes place. I wonder how Noctis got to the world of Opus Seven. I know that <laughs> Opus Seven isn't a world, but like it should be, and that's why we care about it, and that's why we care about places like Dominaria and and you know and and New Phyrexia and those places in Magic. That's kind of a flip side of that, and this was my initial thought. Do you think there's any sort of counter argument to that because there's already games that have all the stories of the individual characters that they don't want to almost like Kingdom Hearts style across no, Final but they Fantasies? Do that. They do it in Kingdom Hearts. They do it in World of Final Fantasy. I mean, they've incorporated it in like Dissidia, but I don't know if you've played Dissidia NT. Pretty bad. There's always people who are going to be upset about a decision that a company makes, but I could see a fair amount of backlash for maybe altering stories or kind of fudging facts to like make things work together rather than being true to like sure. canon. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I That's a weak ass argument. Like if Aerith shows up in the storyline, I wouldn't be like, wait, she's dead. Spoiler. Yikes. Oh, well, if you, <laughs> if, if you hate it, you should just go back and play the video game. Okay. <laughs> not my fault you have played seven, you know? And I will just say that Jared Scott Walters would be the first person I nominate. I've thrown down the nomination. Wait, Sam, you can't talk about nominations. You know how people feel about that. Oh, well, so that's all I had for my end for this week. All right, now we're spitballing. Hint, hint, fan fest opponents. Uh, oh, I mean, if you're talking about it out loud, yeah, you registered monsters so far. Uh, some yeah. some variation. There's a lot of them now. Did you guys have to pre-register? Yeah, you, you basically have to send a list when you submit your registration um, for your team name. So actually, let's talk about the fanfare. Sure. That's I'm it. hyped. Uh, so it's going to be myself, you, Madison, who's my girlfriend. It's going to be Alejandro and uh, yeah. our local Will. I am looking forward yeah. to it. And I mean, part of it for you was you want to travel to an event with James, right? Yeah, yeah I was... wanted to travel to an event with James. It would have been cool to have Cody there. Uh, the tickets uh, sold out, apparently. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. When's fire going to get good? Oh, well... I, I have a funny feeling that's not going to happen. I have a funny feeling it will happen. <laughs> You're escalating. Yeah. Anyway... We mentioned Gen Con earlier. Thoughts on the two world invites. Do we know what format that is yet? That's a, that's what I was trying to get at. I was trying to think of the way to word it. I do whatever with them. I award them to the best bingo player. It doesn't matter. As long as whatever happens at Gen Con is competitive and puts one of the best players into a world spot, I'm fine with it. It sucks that it's like a pay to play though. Gen Con is hella expensive. Yeah, my so. trip is booked. As Okimoto was, he was like, are you coming or not? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, unfortunately, that's going to be a trend moving forward, though, is I think Gen Con each year is going to be an important event. I will I not be know. taking Mono Lightning this time. <laughs> I was, you know, I was, oh, I so did last. I wasn't yeah. going to say, but maybe if Cody listens to me this time, he'll bring home a trophy. Okay, in my defense, Sam was texting me deck lists on my drive there. So let's talk about the competitive season. No, I, I tried to not post anything on Facebook about it because that was kind of all my feed was at the time. Sure. Yeah. Um, Which is why we almost didn't even talk about it. it it's a yeah. good reason why I was happy we were on break. I mean, I had fun drafting at Gen Con last year. I just don't like the idea of, like, in a standard constructed tournament and then having to draft and then have to play again in the con standard constructed tournament. I just want to do one whole tournament. Like, if they say, hey, this Crystal Cup is sealed, I would still go to it. But, but you would be able could... to practice just that format. Yeah, like, even if they said, like, oh, this Crystal Cup is going to be title, 
I think that's a better way to do it. Maybe have one event all draft, one event all title or something like that. What about you, Zach? <laughs> um, I'll try to keep it short. I'll start off with what I agree with, which is I agree that this format will indeed promote the most well-rounded and solid players in the community. As long as Worlds re requires some amount of draft, you need somebody who knows how to do it. And if we want the best representatives from North America, I agree that this format will help to find them. However, <laughs> I myself have no, it's not even that I don't have any interest. Like if someone would just hand me free packs all day and I could just draft and practice, like that'd be great. But like the drafting is hard. It's people say there's no skill to it. It's all luck. It's like, no, there's a lot of skill to it. Uh, I'm willing to admit that. I'm willing to admit I'm horrible at it, but it's because I have a practice and I just, I don't want to spend money on that practice. And that's, Maybe that's a cop out answer, but like that's that's how I feel about it. And I just I don't want to spend my time drafting when I could do constructed and kind of refining myself in that format, which obviously is going to damage me this competitive season. But so if you're a constructed player and you go to a Crystal Cup and you don't do well in the draft, right? You won three, you o four, whatever. Even if you went undefeated in the constructed, you probably can't make top eight cut. Same deal with the flip side of draft, except even worse. Like if you're an amazing draft player, then you may four o the draft, but if you don't go x three in the constructed it, or most likely better than that, you're not going to make top either. Okay, but we could practice that with cubes. I think knowing that there's a fixed card pool and you know what is coming in the future or could come in the future, that it's a guaranteed somewhere in the pool completely changes your decision making versus a random pack from a box that it's you know not, is going to... It's not, though. So when you do the cube, you never... Unless, except for when we have these absurd 10-person, the one time we had like a 12-person right. cube. doesn't happen. You don't use the whole cube. Um, and so not everything is guaranteed to come around. I think that you can definitely practice your limited game in a cube. I do think that the average constructed player is going to be just as good at the actual game in draft. Because even if you're not the greatest drafter, if you go X and 1 in your constructed tournament, I think the average person that goes X and 1 in constructed can go 3 and 1 in draft. That would be my guess. And I see that whenever I cube... There's a reason that you have the same people that do well in Constructed doing well in Cube. One, they understand card synergy. More realistically, like oftentimes you can just outplay people that have better pools, right? Well, we'll find out in Tampa because it yeah, is the first Tampa. Yes. Cup. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and for the record, again, I don't like that it's draft. Um, but I'm not going to say that I'm not going to any of the events because of that. Because like... The game is still fun. Yes, I do think drafting is less fun than constructed because constructed is all about kind of showing off your baby. You know, like this is what I built. Um, <laughs> I raised it myself. No, well, I don't know. For some people, it's not. I get it. You know, like there are the people that that play the best deck, and there's nothing wrong with that, and they like to uh, show off using their skill, and that's cool too. You know, when I get better, maybe that'll be me. But for now, I just like to build really cool decks that people aren't. You know. You know, when I when I play my my Yuri and my Earth Wind deck, like, and people are like, "Oh, I didn't see that coming." It's like cool. <laughs> when I play Barbarisha and play Chalinka, they're like, "Wait, didn't you just discard Shantoto?" It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I what I guess what I'm saying is that I disagree with the harshness and in, in which we are presenting it to Square Enix, but I also hate it. <laughs> if that's <laughs> Like, it's not the end of the world, guys, right? Like, no, Cody, I, I, Cody I are you it. changing any of your event plans because of it? Um, no, I think the main reason I, I'm changing some of my event plans is the fact that it's being hosted at, like, local card shops. Which, okay. for, an for an instance, like Card Game Coliseum, that's an awesome store and I would love to be there. Uh, but I know that it's... Oki says it's a, at least a 45-minute Uber ride from... LAX to Card Game Coliseum. But you're not flying to the LCQ, right? I mean, like, you're going to well, no. be qualified by then, man. Come oh, on for now. sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Undefeated Mono Ice, and then you can lose to me when I say you can't have a Crystal Cup. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to Kansas. Yeah, and I appreciate the win. Sam's reign. I, just, <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that because it allows me to do what I do. Without people <laughs> like you, Cody, I would, I would have no trophy and zach would have got this invite a lot sooner <laughs> <laughs> that loss ended up costing uh, zach something like seven or eight hundred dollars total oh yeah 100%. no was it more than that because if you include the miami Probably, and the miami mishaps like in the atlanta trip 
and then the Orlando trip, like, oh my god, you just like basically like cut Zach out of a thousand dollars even, man. <laughs> like, holy crap. <laughs> But actually, uh, also speaking of Kansas, uh, Sam, are you con- going to the no. Petit Cup well, Grand yes, Final? No, yes, no, yes, and no, no, yes. Okay. I want to go so bad. I want to go so bad because I just I love Kansas. I love the people there, um, and I would go if they were like we're having a win a box tournament. Come on out! And I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fly out there <laughs> <laughs> because it's just. It's just so much fun. It's it's more a financial thing for me right now. So I don't know anything. Anything's up in the air still for this season, unfortunately. Okay. Just a, just a tough uh, tough season this year. No, I understand. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, I will be I, there. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody else can win a Kansas fan if Sam's not there. <laughs> I, don't so. I, don't, I don't know for sure, but I don't. I, who it'll, knows? It's, it'll end in a draw. <laughs> it'll end in a draw. <laughs> Man, yeah. All right. Well, any other? I think that I about wraps us up for today. I think that does, right? Yeah. No, I'd say we're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably argue for a long time about crystal cups and formats and how Cody scummed me out of a thousand dollars. But Kingdom Hearts three comes out in an hour and twenty minutes. So nine, well, nine o'clock where I'm at, guys. That's what GameStop told me. And here we all jump over to GameStop.com, right? That's okay. <laughs> But yeah, when I, I left to do the podcast and got my group number, and they're like, all right, come back at 9 o'clock and you pick up your copy. Is like, that what it is? Can I just skip this? Well, 9 central time. <laughs> I guess the perks of living in a big city is you can call like literally, what, 20 different game stops? One of them's got to answer, right? Maybe they're already giving the game out. Maybe I should have called the one that's like actually right next to my house because <laughs> they're actually good. Is this still part of the podcast? Are we editing this out? <laughs> I might edit it out. It'd be kind of funny at least to have the like ring ring of like him mentioning it at the end. <laughs> if we just let the phone ring for 19 more minutes, we'll be closed. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, we'll start you a, a Kickstarter for you to get Kingdom Hearts. We should, yeah. Midnight on Tuesday. But is that for everybody? Or... Yeah, I asked if they had a midnight release, and they're like, yeah, we're doing a 9 o'clock release tonight. And I was like, sweet. Thank you for calling the GameStop and the Brandon Mall. This is Devin. How can I help you? Hi, Devin. I just had a question. Uh, when does – are you guys going to be open for the Kingdom Hearts release? We are. Uh, we're doing a 9 o'clock launch. However, we have stopped doing the pre-rings, and we would have needed to come at 8:30. Heartbreak. I'm not canceling the Kickstarter. I'm not either way. Cancel the Kickstarter. I can't afford it either way. Okay, thank you, ma'am. No problem. We look forward to seeing you. Yep. I'm gonna break that girl's heart. <laughs> <laughs> She's never gonna see me. She saw the name when you called. She's not, like, oh not. my god, it's Sam Prime from the Choker Bros. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys start a, a Kickstarter. Like, don't let Sam break this girl's heart by not showing up for a Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> Ah, oh, darn! I was just about to. Yeah, don't be a, don't be a little prick and spoil things for everybody. Okay, don't be that guy. I will not because I've had. I'm trying to watch Game of Thrones right now, and it's been ruined <sighs> by Facebook. Ruined. Oh yeah, Absolutely. yeah. You can't watch Game of Thrones now. I mean, it's you can. I I didn't have anything spoiled from Game of Thrones. I didn't watch it till last year, but I didn't have anything spoiled. That's I impressive. Guess, I guess I knew that the Red Wedding was going to be very bloody, but I didn't know what that was or when that was. So. That was it. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, I think that that does it. Yeah, we're we doing an outro now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks again. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, check out cardsofevilrelease.com for uh, your FFTCG gear. Uh, I've been your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell, and I'm Cody Snodgrass. And we'll see you next time. Woo! That'll be fun. Yeah, I remember it. I remember it. <laughs> That's that gonna time. be an editing nightmare. I think. <laughs> no, absolutely. <it> is. <laughs>